Hello, my dear sewing friends. It's Elisa here with Thoughtful Creativity. And today I think the project that I have in mind might be one of those like two in one or even maybe three in one, like an upcycle, a scrap busting project, and also a really nice design for those who sew for the upcoming fall and winter season. All of that being said, of course, it still has to come to fruition from my head into the actual physical project. But let me tell you a bit of how it all started so that way you get a bit of a better understanding what is going on. Last week I was working on a really big video. I had seven different DIYs in it and I had my paints out, my uh, eyes dye, my uh, grid in a big tub and paint brushes and just things here and there. So after the project was done, the video was done, I was just tidying up and making sure that I'm preparing my workspace for the next project. And in the process I thought, well, let me just also tidy up the bin for my remnants. And as I was going through it, I actually came upon a project project idea that I did put aside midsummer just because this was more of like a sweater weather idea for fall season so right now is just like the perfect time for it and I thought oh well this is this is great this is let's do it let's do it you know that moment when just inspiration comes upon you and you uh, maybe you felt a little bit tired maybe you felt a little bit maybe not in the mood but once you see that whatever it is in front of you that kind of sparks you up you're like oh that's the thing, let's go with it. So that's how I feel about it right now. And these are two scarves that were actually from my mom. I think I originally had only one and she had one because she made them. And then somehow I ended up with two. Either way, I actually did wear them back in the day. Um, I had like a black and white dress that went really well with the scarf. But nowadays here where we live in US, it's um, sort of like, um, it's not really a weather for scarves, which I used to wear back in Europe a lot, but here not so much. So I'm thinking I have these remnants from a cardigan that I did a couple of years ago. By the way, there's a tutorial for it on the channel and I absolutely love this cardigan. It's really comfortable. It's definitely a keeper. So I have this beautiful fabric and I have these beautiful scarves and I just see this really interesting sweater design in my mind where the body is made from this beige knit and the sleeves are done from these scarves. But here are the problems that we're running into. Okay, so the first challenge is the fabric, which is the very thing that I absolutely love about these scarves and that's why I want to preserve them and use them up in this project. Take a look at this. It's this sort of like embroidered organza, which is stunning. And I think if done right, could look absolutely beautiful with this fabric that I have over here. But, you can see through this, meaning that any seam that I do will be very visible. And these aren't really too wide at all. And the fact that I have two of them doesn't really do me any good because again, you'll be able to see any seams. And at a first glance, if I put this like that, it seems I have you know, enough fabric to do a sleeve with one seam right over here. But I was really hoping for a, sort of like a bishop sleeve that I can gather here at a wrist. You guys know I absolutely love these kind of sleeves and I thought that this could go really well with this fabric and sort of this overall attitude of the garment. We'll have to see and play around with it and make some decisions, maybe some unpopular decisions when it comes to this design, but we'll see, we'll take a look at it. And then this fabric, as I mentioned, this was the remnant from when I was making the cardigan. And here I think I'll have just enough for cutting out the front and the back. I might end up cutting the back with a seam down the center back, which is totally fine, we'll work around it. But I think this will be just enough for everything that I need. But we will know until we start, so let's do it. I did try my luck. I took the sleeve from the previous project that I did, if you remember, that romantic fall inspired uh, bishop sleeve blouse with a tie from Cotton Boyle. Yeah, so there was a bishop sleeve too. So I took the sleeve, put it on the scarf just to see, just to see if there's enough fabric for the volume that I would want to go for. And yeah, 
there's no way that this sleeve is gonna fit in the width of the scarf. So we'll have to think about it. For the body of the sweater, what I did is I just took my knit bodice block and made some really simple adjustments. I basically just straightened out the side seam and that really was it. But that wasn't the challenge. The challenge was that even if I did cut the pattern pieces flat out of the knit fabric that I have, they still did not fit lengthwise. So the pattern itself was a little bit too long and uh, I really contemplated over it for quite some time and then I just decided, you know what, let's just see if I can just do a wider band on the bottom of the sweater and therefore reduce the length of the pattern. And that's exactly what I did. And uh, ta-da, I was actually able to cut the front and the back on the fold. So no center back seam, which is always nice. Now, about the sleeve, well, the sleeve is a different story. Ah, oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Okay. The only option that I had was to do just a straight sleeve with a wide hem at the wrist, so that way I can gather it up in a cuff, and that's exactly what I did. And here, I realized I also forgot to mention that I'm working with two completely different fabrics. Knit, the beige one, it stretches and the lace doesn't stretch at all. You know, I've made this observation that a lot of times you can divide projects in two different groups. One group is where you don't have any difficulty with the fabric or with the material that you're working with, but the whole sort of like trick is in the actual design and the construction of the garment. And the other group is completely opposite. The design and construction might be really simple and straightforward, but the fabric, the material that you're working with is the one that is not necessarily causing you trouble, but the one that you really have to work around. And I guess there's the third group where both of these come together and then you're sort of with a pickle because not only you have to figure out the construction, but you also have to figure out the material that you're working with and how it is all going to come together. So here, I'm not necessarily sure which one it is. I truly hope that it's just the material that I'm working with so that way I can figure out how to do the sleeve and hopefully it's not gonna cause any other ripples in this whole project. All right, so the shoulder seams and side seams are done. Yay! <laughs> and now I'm going to baste in the sleeve because here I really don't want to take any chances whatsoever as I have barely any fabric left for fixing any mistakes that might occur between now and the final result. So really, basting is the best way to go about it. And once I did baste in the sleeve, here I realized that, oh, it is actually pulling on the unfinished neckline. And with that, because I really can't judge the fit if one piece is pulling on the other because it's unfinished, well, here goes basting in the neckline. And with that, I also quickly constructed the cuff so that way I can see what's going on with the sleeve. But with that being said, I actually could not cut the cuffs before I cut the bottom band purely because of the small amount of fabric that I had left. So I really had to think very strategically of when and how and where to cut what. It's the last stage of the project. It's that make or break moment when you're like, okay, it's either gonna all come together or it's going to be a complete waste of time and then none of this is gonna come together. So I finished all of the seams on a sweater knit with a serger, but when it comes to lace, it's a little bit more complex than that because lace can be so very different, some very gentle, some a little sturdier, and you can also have a variety of different techniques how to finish that seam on the lace so that way it's super invisible. You can place one on top of another, finish it by hand, do a flat seam, and a lot of different things. This one, though, is on a sturdier side, and I was also working with a limited amount of width of the fabric, so piecing it together flat really wasn't an option. And when I did play around with finishing techniques, as a last resort, I was like, you know what, let me just go ahead and serge it and see how it actually looks. And you know what, surprisingly, 
it looked fine. And then of course I finished it with a straight stitch and with a serger. And after that I thought, okay, well maybe I should do a bound seam, so to bind it with a bias tape. And it actually drew more attention to the seam than just a straight stitch and a serger. So I know a lot of people are going to give me a side eye for finishing lace on a serger and a sewing machine, but hey, it works and it looks good. Okay, neckline check, sleeve check. I gotta remove this basting over here. Cuffs, check. Bottom band, check. And by the way, for all of these techniques, I have separate tutorials on the channel. So if you want to check them out, definitely go to my channel, take a look through the videos, and you will see everything that you need to create something beautiful for yourself. Are you ready to see it? <laughs> I'm ready to see it. I'm ready to be done with it. So let me put this on and let me do 360 for you and let's take a look at the final result. what we have over here. As I mentioned throughout the video, the construction itself is super simple. Dare I say even basic. So we have the front, we have the back, we have the neck band, we have the sleeve, which pretty much goes straight from the armhole down to the wrist. Minimal, uh, minimal flare, minimal, just because obviously the, the scarf wasn't wide enough. And therefore I did cinch it in at the wrist with a cuff from the same fabric that the body of the garment was made from. And uh, uh, there's a band on the bottom which is cut a little bit narrower than the actual body of the sweater so that way when you put it on you get that slight cinched effect like a sweater would usually behave on the body and also it sits nice and tight on your hips as well and uh, that's it and here the heavy lifting the main part of the job I think is done by the combination of these two fabrics it's, I wouldn't say it's an unusual combination, but I think that's what really makes this pop, right? This sort of beige caramel color, really nice soft knit, and this embroidered organza. And can you imagine that these are two remnants? This is the scarf, and this is a fabric remnant from a completely different project. So. I think it's a winner. Let me know what you think. And if you did like this fall inspired design, then I have another video about creating a romantic fall inspired blouse. I think you will really like it. It has like a tie and a beautiful sleeves and little gathers at the bust and a little yoke. So click on the video right over here. I think you're going to enjoy it. And until next time, happy sewing. And I'll see you very soon in another video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.